What is up everybody? It's Albert from Muffin Group and in today's video I would like to focus on the WooCommerce. What I would like to show you today is how to present your product categories and kind of blogs we did on the B Furniture Store 2 Prevailed website. In case you didn't subscribe to our channel yet, I would appreciate if you can click that little button below. It means so little and so much. Thank you. So let's get to the most important part of this video. So like I said, right now I'm going to show you how to create these categories uh, you actually see on my screen, where on the left side we have uh, a large category with the sofas and on the right side we have smaller images of four other categories with beds, tables, cabinets and lamps. And this is basically what I'm going to show you right now. So let's say I've already added a new page and uh, went into the B Builder to start creating. And the first thing I need to start with is the section, of course. And inside this section, I need two wraps. I need two wraps because for the left wrap, I will set uh, the large category with sofas and on the right, those other four smaller categories. And basically for this video, I will be using the query loops. So if you didn't have any chance to meet them yet, I will leave you the link in the left top corner so we can watch this video anytime you want for better understanding. Okay, so let's get back to our video right now. So the first thing I have to start from is maybe add some uh, spacing for the section to make it look a bit clearer as I don't like when the wraps are sticky with the section. So let's get into the advanced spacing and let's maybe set 100% for the top and 100% for the bottom. Perfect. Uh, now we can go to the uh, wrap, the left wrap, and inside this wrap, I'm going to enable the query loop because uh, this is basically what I need to create the product categories. And uh, as soon as I enable the query loop, I have uh, down there below a select field uh, called query type. Here I have to set terms because product categories are under the terms. And for this video, I will be using just includes field because it perfectly fit for the needs of this project, of this tutorial. So mm, for the left wrap, I need to display the sofas. So all I have to do is uh, go to the includes tab and find the category I need. All right, that's great. And you may actually wonder why you don't see anything inside this uh, wrap. I'm going to explain you right now. So for the wrap, I just set the general settings I will be working on. And I just told the people there that for this wrap, I would like to display in query loop the product categories. And in this case, it's gonna be only sofas because this is the only category I just included here. And now to display the sofas, what I need to do is go to the elements. The most important thing I need right now is the image. So I'm going to drag and drop it right now. And for the image, what I have to set is click on that dynamic data button. And because I already, and the query loop said that I will be working on the product categories, this field shows me under the dynamic data only the fields available for product categories. And for the image, it's gonna be just the product category image. And as soon as I will click that button, I will see the sofa instead of the default image. So I hope this is clear. I just tried to explain it as clean as, clear as possible. And so if anything is not clear, just let me know in the comments and I will be just answering on your questions. All right, let's move on. So uh, the other thing I need right now, as you remember, on the example page I, I've shown you, uh, there was a product category title just underneath the image. So it's another element uh, we need to add into our wrap. And this element is the heading. So 
Let's find the heading. It's my another favorite element for this project. So it's on the very top of all elements. And what now I have to set is I want it to be the title of product category. So again, I'm going just I'm going to remove the title, the default title. Uh, I'm going to click on the dynamic data button. And as said before, I have only the dynamic data for this product categories loop. And it's the product category title. And as soon as I choose it, you're gonna see the sofa's title. And that's what I wanted to achieve here. That's perfect. And uh, what we need to do now is style it a bit uh, to, because right now we don't have this gray background uh, behind the image and the title. And as you remember, the title was a bit up. It, it wasn't just underneath, but it was probably a, in absolute position. I'm going to check it. Okay, so what I have to do now is go to the style tab and style the title a bit uh, to look it a bit better. So the size I ha we had on our uh, pre-built website was the 19 uh, pixels, of course, and the line height was 25, and uh, the phone weight was 600, and that's it for the title. And now inside the advanced tab, spacing, I also need to set uh, the margin and the right in the project was 12 and left margin was 12 pixels as well. And what else I have to do to set here? Or maybe, or, okay, I will show you a bit different way uh, first. So maybe I will get back into the image and inside the advanced background tab, I will set the background color for that image. It's gonna be a kind of gray. That's exactly the same color as in the project. So I just did it to show you how the absolute position for the heading underneath works. So now I can go back to the heading as just like in the project, it was on this gray background just underneath the sofas. So what I have to do right now is go to the advanced positioning tab and what I have to do is set the position to absolute. That's perfect. You don't see this element right now because it's hidden underneath this pink wrap loop label because position absolute tells this heading to be just to start in the left top corner. And to move it right now, what I have to do is set the bottom position and I want it to be 16 pixels, that's great. And I want to move it from the left side by 24 pixels. That's great, that's, that's exactly what I wanted to do. Okay, so our left wrap is ready. And so we can move to the right side. And here I have to set uh, the query loop as well, just like it did for the left sidebar, for the left wrap, sorry. Here I have to se uh, select the terms product category and what I, what I want to do uh, right now is I want to add more categories as you remember there was four categories we had in the uh, right wrap and I want to add them here right now so in includes I will just add the pets cabinets lamps and tables and these are the categories I basically need here and again, you don't see any elements because I didn't populate it, uh, this wrap with elements. So maybe I will add the image right now. Uh, let's go to dynamic data. Let's populate it with the images. And that's it for now. So there is one important thing I just want to show you right now. And it's how to squish them to uh, make them smaller and put them in two by two. Uh, so if I will get back to the settings of the wrap and the style tab, container, I can set the item width. By default, it's 100%. So as soon as I will switch the pixels value 
and I will set item width to 50, I will get desired look where I have two by two. So that's what I wanted to show you and I really hope that this option is also clear and you know why I use it. Uh, and <clears throat> now the other uh, element like uh, for the left wrap is I need to set the gray background and the title underneath. So let's get into the uh, image advanced background and here I have to set uh, sorry, kind of gray color, I think that was, yes, that was uh, this color. And now let's get back to the elements and let add the heading. So let's remove the default heading title and let's populate it with the title. And also I need to style this title a bit in the style typography tab. So. Let's set 19 uh, pixels, 25 for the line high, phone weight was 600 and that's it. And let's get into the advanced tab positioning. Let's switch position to absolute for the absolute position. All right, that was the bottom. 16 pixels and 24 pixels on the left side. All right, that looks way much better right now. You probably noticed a small difference between the example I shown you before and the one we have right now. <clears throat> you probably noticed that the edges of these product categories the bottom one are not at the same height and it's because for the left image we set uh, the spacing but we didn't done the same for the images in the right side I just forgot about it so what I have to do now is go to the edit advanced spacing tab and I have to set the same values as I set for the left uh, wrap and it was 12 pixels for the right, 24 pixels for the bottom, and 12 pixels for the right side. As you can see, the edges are now exactly the same high and product categories looks really, really nice. As you can see, within a few minutes, we were able to create great looking product categories with query loops and that's basically why I strongly recommend to use them. Thanks to them and the other options that I didn't have the opportunity to show in this tutorial, you can create really different layouts tailored to your needs at a given moment. Hope you learned something new from this video and from now on, your projects will be enriched with more interesting presentations of product categories. If you enjoyed this video, I strongly recommend to watch another video about creating custom product sliders. I will leave you this video on the right side, but also I will leave you another one on the left side as these videos are really similar, uh, but just showing how to create two different product sliders. And as always, thank you for watching and remember to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time we release a new video. If you have more questions, please visit our support center at support.muffingroup.com.